you're still watching Plus Politics. Now, it seems the travails of Amayeli Shori has only just begun, as it has been reported that the Nigerian activist was questioned over purported ties to Boko Haram. Not just that, the Shiite movement and, <laughs> wait for it, the indigenous people of Biafra. What could be Shori's crime here? I mean, is there more to it than meets the eye? Well, I can't be judge or jury or even. <laughs> uh, but I have in the studio still, um, Bister Jide Ologun and Bister Dotun Hassan. Gentlemen, uh, I'm going to start with you, Dotun. Shore's woes seem to be endless, unfortunately. After the drama that we saw in the courtroom just a, a few weeks, uh, I think last week or two weeks ago, and here we are with trumped up charges. And one would wonder, Really, is there more to it that meets the eye, or is there something the DSS knows that we don't? Well, it's been a it's been a an unfortunate situation that we got ourselves to this level, especially when government sees itself as a play chess that anything goes and they can spill spill out anything to the public, and this is a scenario of the Shores case that just. In a, if you, if you are in, in, in a sane society, everything is procedural. You don't need too much euphoria for you to paint or call a dog a, a bad name. You don't need too much um, to, to say through the DSS. The DSS need not even be the one to prosecute you, right? For whatever reason whatsoever, the police is a police duty. That is as civil as the case is. Well, but then again, but, they would say but, it's an issue of national no, security. The, 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 we have just found ourselves, the way we grew up into our democracy, from the military, that mentality of militocracy is still <laughs> embedded in us. And that's why we find ourselves that there is no, the, the government of, of the present administration has defied all reasoning to obey court rulings, to honor good governance, to ensure rule of law is you know, primarily applicable to our system. So the Shores case is more embarrassing than even the issue itself. Now, we are not saying that the law should not take its course for anybody that, that fall uh, uh, prey of uh, violating the law of the land. But the application of rule of law, not rule of force, in Expense of our, at the expense of our democracy and that situation we are now. That the case of the DSS coming up with a, a magical uh, one that will now appeal to Re, as if Sore must go down. That is where we are. This government is not serious. For you to come up with an investigation, the due diligence, where, are the, where is the due diligence now of the whole DSS now to know, not to know what charges should be prepared while you are in court, you are rearresting, when there is a court order for that granted you uh, uh, a release of a suspect. And in a case you are also a party in, you now arrogate yourself with that judicial authority, that position of the judge <coughs> of hammering or, uh, if a, a, another party that, you, that both of you are equal before the judge, that is a, a defilement of that rule of fair hearing, that you cannot be a judge in your own cause, and the judge must hear both sides of the case. So it's a situation, irrespective of what they are coming up with, that is linked to Boko Haram, is linked to Shite, is linked to IPOB. This to us is just to ensure that, yes, let your rep be hanged with a treasonable uh, maybe felony, but it behoves on the government. It's not just you adducing the, the charges, but it's a proof you have to prove beyond reasonable doubt. And it will be quite unfortunate that I don't know how the DSS will go about it because they are in, uh, 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 in violation of, of, of the court already because I see a, 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 a contempt of court because they acted on the various of the duty. Well, they have come out to say that the man in court, they don't know who he is. They, 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 have, they have admitted one thing. That is that there was an arrest within the court. Well, area. and it was if DSS. I, if I understood what they said, and I'm not in any way, yes. once again, <laughs> you know, the spokesperson of the DSS, yes. but from whatever, from the re release that they put out, they said the arrest was only done outside the courtroom. <laughs> but that the drama that happened within the court where... Was orchestrated by Shuri. Orchestrated by Shuri's followers. As, yes, no, no, no. 
allegedly. Yeah. You know, you know, you know. Sometimes the government always forget the fact that they are the major player. They are the habitat of the heroes that we find ourselves, and they play a major role. But the unfortunate situation is that this whole scenario is in the four eyes of the whole world, and it's quite unfortunate that we are now hiding behind our fingers. The only thing that we are now, look at the embarrassment. The DSS can no longer continue holding down, mm. maybe on the prosecution of the case, because they don't have that moral. But if they go to court tomorrow and go and stand as the prosecutor the, the, with their prosecution team with all these charges, I'm sure if the judge, I'm sure the, 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 the judge also do the, the, the needful. You, you don't sound case. like you're sure if the judge will be able to make the right decision. You say, you're, still I still, going, you're trying no, to, but then I you still to hope. convince yourself. I still hope. You know, we cannot prejudice the judge. Should we, be we, we, should, we cannot prejudice the judge. I will, come back. I will judge come back to this. this I, I will put a pin there. I will come back to ask you if we should be hoping in terms of the law when it's supposed to be black and white. If a man who was initially um, taken in for treason for trying to incite the people against government, all of a sudden is linked to Boko Haram, insurgents, linked to a religious group who's asking for the release of their leader. And of course, a group of people who are asking for um, them to be given their own sovereignty. <clears throat> Does it mean that all of these groups are linked? I'm just. This is me, the ordinary Nigerian, trying to understand the DSS's mind. So if the DSS says that one person is linked to all three of these groups, does the DSS also mean that we're suff suffering from insurgents by Boko Haram, and Boko Haram has ties with IMN and in turn have ties with IPOB? This is my question. You know, I know that in the criminal justice value chain, you need a thorough investigation you need a diligent prosecution, and you need a committed judiciary. So I'm embarrassed that Shure is just being questioned now on his. I mean, you saw when the US government arrested some for involvement in cybercrime, the investigations were perfected. Before exactly. they came to the media. So, and again, let me isolate DSS and show their color to the world. When in 2018, <clears throat> suddenly the mobile policemen or whoever from DSS went to the National Assembly and blocked the entrance, maxed with weapons. It was a huge drama. And when they were confronted, they said, order from above. Till now, we don't know who gave that order from above. And I was one of those who cautioned the National Assembly that don't feel too comfortably, uh, comfortable rather, in this hallowed chamber, that we have three arms of government. We have separation of power, the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary. And we must balance this. Now is the case of the judiciary. Whether it is denied or not, the video is out there. But I know also that when Ganduje was, was filmed collecting bribe, we have wriggled out of it, in fact, Court of Appeal just threw out the matter Definitely now that the EFCC the cannot present a forensic uh, backup for that. So we are in a country that appears to be in the denial mode. But the realities are there. And the foreign powers are showing interest now in the fact that we must follow the rule of law. Talking about the, the rule of powers. law is the fountain of justice, I'm of so, peace, sorry, of prosperity. I'm sorry, Logan. Talking about foreign powers, we have a video uh, where a U.S. senator had uh, his thoughts as to what happened to Shori some weeks, some days ago in court. Let's take a look. Today, my office contacted our ambassador in Nigeria in an effort to obtain answers about what actions the United States is taking on the Shori family's behalf. In the next several days, I'll continue to engage with the State Department in Washington to ascertain the impact that the rearrest of Mr. Soare and the detention of other activists and journalists will have on our relationship with Nigeria. My hope is that the bilateral relationship we have with Nigeria will be reassessed in light of these events. Mr. Soare needs to be free, 
and he needs to be free now. The rule of law must be observed, and that means he should be liberated. With that, I invite Mrs. Warren to say a few remarks. Pause. So that's a U.S. senator talking about the fact that there are bilateral relations between Nigeria and America, and they're asking for the liberation of this man. But here we are. I'm still yet to understand, I'm, and I asked you as a lawyer, maybe there's something we don't know, that a group of people who are asking for liberation to go get their own country, which has its own problems, are tied to a group of other people who share a different kind of religion, who are asking that they allow their leader to be freed if they don't have charges against him, or if the court has not necessarily charged him or sentenced him to jail. And then we have a group of faceless terrorists who have been killing us in our numbers <clears throat> in the north, who have said that they do not want Western education. I'm trying to understand what the link is with all these three groups. And one person by the DSS has been accused of having ties with all three of them. He must be a genius. I think this government is confronted with a reputational and image crisis. The Boko Haram was homegrown. It started in Beduguri in the year 2000 or so, and went here for Hawaii from year 2009. This same Boko Haram kidnapped Chibor girls, no clue till now, kidnapped the Dapchi girls, returned them in a, in a satiric drama. So who is fooling who? What is IPOP asking for? The El Zazaki we are talking about. The court has asked the man to be released. And he's still be, being held. And another drama unfolded. When this man went to India and came back, he, 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 he spoke that he probably has not been kept in the prison, but kept in one apartment somewhere. You know what I mean? And the Minister of Information and, and, and Tourism told us that they were spending 3.5 million to feed Naira, to feed El Zazaki and his wife on a monthly basis. So let's stop embarrassing this country. The United States is telling us, whether we are denied the realities or not, that is the democracy we emulate. The rule of law is the foundation of justice, of peace, of prosperity. So with the results we have in the country, we should know that we are running a wrong type of democracy, perhaps a militarized democracy. And I was impressed when my president went to the National Assembly while presenting the proposed budget for 2020, where he told some senators that the world is watching. The world is watching and the world may act. Nigeria needs prosperity. We need true democracy. We need justice. We need fairness. We need respect for the rule of law. Okay. All right, we got to go. Gentlemen, unfortunately, we do not have time. These conversations always are very interesting. But I want to say thank you to Barista Dotson Hassan and Barista Gideo Logo. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank um, you. God bless Nigeria. Well, well, we'll take a short break and bring you a plus package. And when we return, oh, I will be giving you my take. Stay with us. The national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Adams Oshomale, has accused the Nigerian police force of bipartisanship in Edo State. Oshomale spoke on the heels of the just concluded APC Edo State mega rally, which he said he intentionally stayed away from in the interest of peace, saying, contrary to reports from the police, the party has proved naysayers wrong by holding a peaceful rally. He said the receipt of the former PDP governorship candidate, Osage Ize Iyamu, into the party shows that the party has become the party of choice for residents of the state. By the grace of God, we have been able to gather, and it is well. I thank the national leadership, led by Comrade Adam Soshomole, and all those who came yesterday. Because of all the tension, we told them to relax. We don't need anybody to join the political party of our choice. And for those who have come to honor us, we want to thank you. For those who also think we are their enemies, we want to extend the hands of peace. We are not your enemies. We have not come to fight anybody. Even if you slap us, we will turn the other cheek. We have not come to fight. We have come to be your brothers. We have come to be your friends. And we beg you in the name of God, let peace reign. 
If there is peace in Edo, there will be development. If there is development, the government will do well. And if the government does well, APC will do well. The leadership quality of a man is tested. Others, excessive provocation. And if it was my old self, I will not only go there today, I will make such military speech that by now the battle line will be drawn. But as national chairman, I have to pay the price by abstaining from going there so that I deny the IG and the Edo Police Command any excuse to go and kill people and blame it on me. As you can see, in spite of the police, we had a good outing. I thank you for keeping faith, convey the truth. Whether the people you saw there are electoral asset to APC or they are electoral liability. And therefore, if anybody wishes to retain the governance of this state, whether he can possibly do so by locking out all those people. But we will sustain the part of peace. That is the only reason I opted not to go there today. I saw they already planted a story from government house. Say I was under house arrest. <laughs> I have other house arrests. I'm more than compensated by the fact that the rally took place. You can see those numbers. Much more importantly, in spite of police plan to create a mayhem so that they can blame me, the forces of progress ensure that nobody was hurt. It's time for my take. So, Mr. President is asking young Nigerians to stay back in the country and advance it. Great speech, Mr. President, but I always ask, why do you think these young people keep leaving the country? Have you ever stopped to think about it? Well, I will fill you in. Bad governance, bad living conditions, brain drain, insecurity, no power, no roads, zero health care. To point to, to a few things, I'm just helping you out here. And yet, we have a government. So I ask, Mr. President, when you tell us to look in worlds and advance the country, what role has the government played in helping us to achieve this? Because you, you know the reason why we put people in government is so they can make life easy for us, so we can all progress. So have successive governments helped the Nigerian youth to grow and, and achieve its potentials? Well. I'll leave that for you, Mr. President, and those who work with you to figure that out. But this is for the average Nigerian, dear young Nigerian person. I applaud you. I appreciate your tenacity against the odds. You're, you thrive. You survive. You struggle to make ends meet. I am proud of you. Keep the face. Keep trying. One day, things will turn around for good. Now, while we all can't run away from Nigeria, we will stay the course. We will fight for what is ours and will build the Nigeria of our dreams. Brick by brick, we can and we will. I am Mary Anacone. It's been Plus Politics. <laughs>